Hey everyone, welcome to the Men Unchained podcast. I'm your host, Nick Knight. Have you ever been labeled or even labeled yourself? A few examples would be procrastinator, lazy, depressed, addict, and maybe one you haven't thought of that really got me was resilient. Today I'm going to dive into how these have affected me and how they may be holding you back also. I'll go back to when I was born and my parents being 16 when my mom got pregnant, 17 when I was born. And being from a Catholic family, it wasn't acceptable to have a child out of wedlock. So my mom was actually shipped off to California and was only allowed to come back if she married my dad. That that relationship definitely turned out to not be the model for how to start a family. And throughout that period of my life, I did learn a few things from my dad. And that was to never hit a woman and not to let things stop you from doing what you want to do. And it wasn't until later in my life that I realized that could be good or bad. One example of this was one time I was probably five or six and my dad and I were taking the Harley to the spring nationals, which was about 50 miles away from our house. And on the way there, we got a flat tire and without skipping a beat, my dad stuck out his arm and we started hitchhiking the rest of the way. And once we got there, we made a phone call for somebody to come pick us up after the race and also pick up the bike on the way home. And we never skipped a beat. And during that time at school, I had a PE teacher that would, every time I would walk in, every time I would see him in a hallway, he would say, Nick Knight takes a licking and keeps on ticking. And it was from the old Timex commercial. But in that moment, I determined that I was resilient from the few things I'd learned from my dad, from him saying that, and just the way that my life had gone to that point. Once my dad left when I was eight, I think was the last time I saw my dad. And at 11 years old in February, he killed himself. And June of that same year, a few days after my birthday, my great grandparents died two, three days apart without even thinking. I just kind of carried on with my life. I didn't, I don't know if I grieved. I don't know how far or how much I even really understood how much had just happened in my life in such a short amount of time. What I did start to notice was that I didn't do well without chaos. So in my subconscious, whatever it was, I created problems for myself to overcome. And that definitely continued on as I got into high school. And started drinking, cutting class, and just all kinds of mischief that teenagers get into. And as I graduated, I went into the Army as an infantryman with an airborne contract as well as a ranger contract. And in basic training, I gave up the ranger contract to go to the old guard because it was an inauguration year. And... They needed people for that unit. And once I got there at 18 years old, not in the normal infantry base in the middle of nowhere and being in D.C., there was a lot of challenges as far as not getting into trouble, not drinking, and... When things were going good, I would find I would blow it. I 
fell out of the back of a pickup truck at 70 miles an hour onto the freeway and spent three days in intensive care when everything was going perfect. And through those, especially in the military, you end up going to these alcohol classes. And during that time, they sent us to ADAPSI, it's called, and they wanted us to go to AA meetings. And as I went to AA meetings, I realized really quick that people clung to the title of alcoholic or addict, which led to comments like, I wake up every day knowing that I'm an alcoholic and that I can't drink that day or I can't use that day. And there seemed to be a relationship between I'm an alcoholic and how hard my life is going to be because of that. And right then I realized that it was a title that became a prison that you couldn't escape and that there was no way to live a different life, to learn things, to, to start hobbies, to start other habits and simply not think about it and not have that struggle that a title seemed to create. And at this point, I will say, I am not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. And in, this is just my opinion in the way that I saw it at that time and how it's applied to my life since and figuring out how that applies to so many titles back to procrastinator, lazy, depressed, fat, all of those things entrap you into believing that that's what your life is and that it can't be different. I have periods where I will feel depressed, but I'm not depressed. That's not who I am because if I was depressed, how could I ever be happy? And on the flip side of that, if all I ever was was happy, how could I process negative emotions? How could I be sad? Because there's, a, there's times where you're, you need to be sad. You need to grieve. Like when I was 11 and 12 and all those things had happened and I didn't take that time because to me, I was resilient and I could get through that and none of that would bother me and life would go on. Dropping the labels isn't the absence of feeling and feeling those things. It's not having that as your identity and who you are to where you feel that you can't be anything different. Like right now, I own a bike shop and this little small town in Montana that I live in and everybody calls me the bike guy. If I walk into the grocery, oh, hey, you're the bike guy and we'll talk about bikes. But I realize, you know, as, the, as we joke about it, that's not who I am. I'm not the bike guy. That's not who I am. I'm also a father. I'm also, I do ride bikes and I, a lot of my lifestyle does go around that, but that's, not it. If you were to take that away from me tomorrow, that wouldn't be the end of my life. It, it isn't what defines me as who I am as Nick Knight. A few examples of this is professional athletes who have spent the majority of their life preparing, training, and becoming elite to a point where they're able to do that and when they're done, what happens to most of them? Trouble. They're unfulfilled. Yeah, you have the success stories, absolutely, who have went on to create businesses and help people. But think of how many people are just in the NFL and you only hear of a handful of them that do things outside of football after their football career apply that to all the sports and that number starts to get pretty big. How many people do you hear about when they retire or lose their job 
or get injured and can't do their job anymore that get lost because that was their identity and now they don't know who they are. I'm not going to go too far into marriage on this podcast because there'll definitely be another podcast about it, um, especially in dealing with the divorce and co-parenting and things like that. But one of the issues that I had in my marriage was once I was married and labeled myself a husband, I tried to be what I thought a husband was and in turn lost myself and all the things she loved about me in the first place. I look back and realize that I could have created my own version of what a husband is with my personality, with what made me me instead of feeling like I needed to be what the world thought a husband should be. How often in life do we take those expectations and not follow the path that we believe we should be on because of what someone else thinks or even what we think we should be if we really get down to what labels are it's a way for people to feel better about themselves because if they can put you in a box of anything fat lazy again depressed addict anything they can compare themselves to you feel better or feel worse about themselves, I guess, because it's a way to keep score. And how does that benefit anybody? It doesn't. It just continues to create comparisons that don't allow you to see who that person really is or who yourself is if you're the one being labeled. You see yourself as the label and nothing else. So the way I found to deal with this and try to avoid as much as I can labeling myself, prejudging, labeling others is be more present as far as dealing with today for what today is and not dwelling on the past and not being overly critical of the future. I actually had this conversation with someone the other day about having learned from the past, whether it be relationships, friendships. And I said that I don't hold anything from those past relationships against somebody that I'm meeting today because they're not responsible for those past feelings. And they said, well, how can you do that? That's something from that's going to come up and past trauma response, whatever it may be. And the only way that I was able to process even that comment was I had to grow from those things that had happened in the past and in interactions with other people. So using them for my self growth but not placing that on somebody else and basically giving every person that I come into contact with their own canvas to paint their own picture for me instead of viewing them from a filter based on past experiences because they're not the same person. I'm not the same person I was when those things happened kind of like a kid and allowing every day to be new and fresh, taking it in as the person that I am now, not the person that I was. Kind of like the question I see come around on social media. If you could go back to being six years old and know what you know now, would you do that or would you take a million dollars right now? And I do believe that I would go back to my six-year-old self with the knowledge that I have now 
because I believed that I could make different decisions based on the life lessons that I've learned that I wouldn't lose because I would be taking them back with me. So it's not changing who I am or who I've become. It's getting that fresh start and viewing each day as a child allows me to see things as they are versus how I think they should be or expect them to be and not learning anything new. I want to learn each day. I don't want to reach a ceiling of not learning, not growing. And I challenge you to each day, stop living with an attachment to a label of yourself or on somebody else and see how each day begins to change. Because I believe once you start viewing yourself and others without those expectations that a lot of times a label gives you, you'll begin to see different parts of people and different parts of yourself that allow you to break free from being stuck in a box with a limitation based on something that isn't true. Because no matter what label you have or what you believe about yourself, you're capable of anything else. You don't have to be that label. You don't have to be just a dad or just a husband or lazy or an addict, depressed. Just because you're a father doesn't mean you can't be a business owner or an athlete or anything else that sets an example for your child to allow them to know that they don't have to just be one thing. Their life is made up of a bunch of different things and that they can be all of that and you can be all of that. My kids enjoy seeing that I can own a small business, work on bikes, ride bikes, but at the same time, start a podcast about something completely different than bikes because I'm passionate about it and it fires me up to feel that I can use my experience to help someone else the same way I use it to teach them about life. And one of the most important parts of that is not viewing people as a label, but as people. And as we finish up here today, I just hope that the next time you meet somebody or somebody that you already know, that you may think about how am I viewing this person? How do I view myself? And see what comes of that. See if you do start to see things differently and where you can grow and where you can give others opportunity to grow in a way that you may not have seen before. I really think you may surprise yourself with what you start to observe by doing this. Because truly, the worst thing that can happen is you learn something new. And is that a bad thing? I don't believe so. And I don't think you do either. Because that's not how we normally live our lives. Or at least we shouldn't. And with that, that's all I've got for you today. I do hope that you were able to relate with part of my story or something that I said here today and want to thank you again for listening to the Men Unchained podcast. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe or follow on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. We're also on YouTube at Men Unchained. This podcast will actually be paired with a video of some scenery on a bike ride that I had this past summer so that you have something to look at other than me sitting here talking to you. And until next time, make every day a great day.